Hello, good evening. This is Gautam Bhattacharya of Gulf News. With me, I've got a very special guest today for a discussion on IPL, which as all of you know that, you know, the cricket's uh, biggest festival in India it had to be suspended yesterday because of, you know, unforeseen circumstances. With me, I've got uh, Mr. Nes Vadia, who of course doesn't need any introduction, but yes, I'm in, uh, as for now, he, he's there as the co-owner of uh, Kings 11, Punjab Kings, and is one of the leading industrial skills of the country. The IPL had been a passion for him from day one. Uh, he and the team of uh, uh, owners, they have weathered many a storm to bring the rebranded Punjab Kings to where it is. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much, Nes, for joining and agreeing to do this. Thank you for your time. And Thank you to Gulf News and I hope everyone in the UAE and uh, everywhere else in the world is safe and I hope and pray that COVID exits our lives sooner than later. Absolutely. Okay, Ness, uh, we'll get down to uh, the IPL, obviously. I mean, yesterday uh, the decision came. Uh, now, uh, you know, what, what were the, you know, what was the tip off point? I mean, obviously, gradually what happened was uh, players started testing positive despite the best effort of uh, the franchises. So if you can just take us through as to how you arrived at this, uh, what must be a tough decision for you? I think uh, it first started off with Kolkata and um, Chennai, if I believe a couple of days ago. And a couple of players and support staff um, getting um, covid and then the next morning, it spread to Delhi and Sunrisers. And I mean, with two teams not playing for a week because of quarantine, I think it could have continued. But with four teams, um, it would be a non-starter. So I think it was the right decision to uh, stop the IPL. I think also the cases in India are quite high and it's become more risky than it was uh, three weeks ago when it started. Um, so that's the reason for the suspension. I think it's the right decision at the right time. Right. Uh, well, I mean, uh, as long as the tournament was continuing, I mean, today there was there was some talk, you know, about uh, what the bubble uh, tight enough from what it was when the tournament was being held in in the UAE. Uh, we have spoken about uh, the, the during the tournament, during and before the tournament in the UAE. But obviously, there were no, no stones left unturned in securing uh, the safety of the players and all the stakeholders in India as well, isn't it? No, that's 100% correct. I think uh, no stone was left unturned. Unfortunately, this uh, COVID, um, you know, uh, seems to have a way of even going through every stone which, is, which has not been left un unturned. I mean, it's now I hear that it's coming through... Uh, toilet ducts and uh, various other means and um, you know so it's a, it's, it's a tough situation um, it's an unpredictable virus and it finds its way through anything and everything unfortunately and I think that's a lesson I think also the lesson is that you know maybe more testing maybe more security in terms of the uh, bubble and maybe having more people uh, who were not involved in the bubble earlier I'm not sure who was not involved um, you know, but I think that's the way the BCC and IPL should look at it for the future. Right. Well, uh, you know, as the dust is kind of settling down, I think the, the big headache which, uh, you know, each of the franchises had been to, to you know, ensure a, a smooth passage back home, not only for your Indian players, but for your overseas players. And you've got quite a few. You've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, people that have to go back to the West Indies, People are going to go back to the Australia. I mean, where it's a, it's a no flight zone now. David Malan has to go back to the UK. So today, I'm sure you, you must have spent quite a bit of time in kind of uh, lining up or delegating this uh, to the people who handled it. I mean, where are you now in terms of sending them home? I mean, luckily, we've got an administration team in sending them off. So, um, you know, uh, fortunately, we've, we've we've got a team which does that. Uh, I think a few have managed to find their way and a few are still going. So it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, the Australians in particular uh, uh, are the most uh, hit. Um, and I don't think they're allowed back for another week or 10 days. Um, yeah. But again, you know, these are international players. And um, 
it's unfortunate, but I'm sure sooner than later they'll find their way home and my heart goes out to them and their families. And uh, I just, uh, you know, would request them to be a little bit more patient and uh, things will fall into place sooner than later. Right. Uh, okay, I mean, there is also some talk. I mean, it's still very, very early stages. First, you know, the, the COVID uh, second surge has to be brought under, in control in India. But there is some talk that, you know, should there be a window available around September? Because October, November is the World T20, wherever it takes place. If it takes place in India, the situation improves. Uh, the name of UAE has been thrown up once again. And they were officially the backup uh, uh, venue, as the ICC said. So uh, how realistic do you think are the chances of, you know, getting over? Because not even half of the tournament is finished. So how realistic do you think are the chances of uh, hosting the rest of it uh, as and when? I think, you know, almost half is, is, is complete, fortunately. Uh, I think we need another 20 odd days to complete this. I think there's a very realistic chance that it will happen before the World Cup. That seems to be the only window available. You never know what might happen, um, but that seems to be the case. I think secondly, the UAE uh, is, is a good backup. Obviously, we'd prefer to hold it in India and preferably, you know, by, by then we'd be able to get fans in and COVID would be a lot less um, aggressive and the cases would be much less than they are today. Um, so I think we'll have to see what happens over the next uh, couple of months. Yeah, but, in May, you know, yes. we've got we've got another funds to to go. So I I'm, I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, um, and prayers to the Almighty that um, you know things improve. COVID um, does decrease not only in India and across the world, and hopefully things will slowly come back to um, some sort of normalcy sooner than later. Right. Yeah, uh, one thing I would like to ask here, uh, you know, uh, pardon my ignorance, but uh, Punjab Kings or the first 12 Kings 11 Punjab, I mean, they have always thrown themselves into any form of uh, CSR activity when it's called for, for various causes. Now, uh, this year, with the things being so bad on the COVID front, uh, has Punjab Kings uh, announced anything or they're in the process of doing something now that, you know, the tournament is suspended, you can put your minds to it and maybe do something? Yeah, I mean, you know, last year we donated to the Prime Minister's Fund, I think 60 lakhs or 70 or something like this. And this year we've already, even during the tournament and, and before the tournament, um, we were looking at helping um, the COVID situation. And uh, we've allocated funds, I think 1.2 crores or something like this for the uh, oxygen uh, requirement uh, and for various other uh, COVID uh, equipment requirements uh, apart from uh, sponsoring other people. So we've already actioned that um, I think about 10 days ago and the board took a decision to do that. So I'm happy to say that uh, that's already happened. We're not in the business of publicizing what we do for uh, our fellow human beings, um, but that's what we've done. Right. Okay, then just, just to take our minds off and just get back into the team, uh, if you can give us an update about uh, KL Rahul, I mean, unfortunate that he had to suffer appendicitis, uh, you know, this flare up. So how did his surgery go and how is he doing now? When can we get him to see back in action? His, his surgery went well, touch wood, thank God. Uh, he's fit. He's coming back to normal. And uh, I think definitely when the IPL resumes, he'll be there to play with us again. And I, I wish him a speedy recovery. Right. Right. And, and just one line from you, uh, I have been, you know, uh, uh, trying to speak to you for a while, but, you know, the rebranding of Punjab Kings, uh, the new theme, how has it gone? I mean, so far the tournament hadn't gone the way you would have liked to, but there had been a few good wins as well. Uh, then, of course, this fitness issues and all came. So, uh, a bit about your thoughts uh, behind the rebranding and what are your expectations if uh, the tournament resumes later this year? I think the 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 rebranding is a good move. Um, you know, we've had the same colors and brand for about 14 years and it was felt that we should uh, do something. There were thoughts, uh, oh, sorry, on the name. There were thoughts on the colors as well, uh, but we went with these colors. Um, we might look at considering changing the colors next year. This year, where there was a paucity of time. 
so that's the status and um, yeah looking forward to um, you know everyone playing the IPL again um, fit KL Rahul and for the team to do uh, a lot better I mean we've got huge potential with some of the players we have I just, just think that we have to back ourselves a little bit more and to have a situation where you win one game, lose another and win another and lose another is not very consistent. I think that has to be improved. And I'm sure Anil Kumble, uh, the coach and his staff and the captain and the players would, would rise to the occasion. So hopefully it'll be a better tournament uh, in terms of the second half for Punjab Kings. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wadi, for Thank your you. time. I think a uh, few months down the line, when we talk again, uh, we should be in a much more better uh, frame of mind and uh, possibly we can look at uh, hosting the remaining part of IPL in whichever part of the world it's said. Uh, thank you once again for your thank you for Thank you for your time and I just wish all the viewers, you know, whoever's suffering a safe recovery and uh, whoever's not be safe and uh, prayers to everyone in the world. Thank you. God bless.